In this video, we will go over how to process SQS messages with Lambda function one by one or in batches. We'll build the entire solution and test it end to end. If you look at our design diagram, you may notice that our Lambda function is in essence a message listener. That means that SQS triggers Lambda when message is available. The Lambda automatically pulls the messages from the queue. This message is being processed within our Lambda handler. And if processing is successful, message is deleted from the queue. If it fails, message is inserted back to the queue and retried. After a certain number of retries, which we can set in our uh, configuration, message is retired or put into dead letter queue. The beauty of this solution is that it doesn't require writing logic for polling messages, patching, retrying, or deleting from the queue. It all happens behind the scenes and you don't need to write single line of code for it. If this sounds interesting, this video is for you. The video is divided into five sections. In the first section, we will set up an SQS queue. In the second section, we will create Lambda function, which will be responsible for processing messages from the queue. In the third section, we will write and test Lambda function logic. In the fourth step, we will connect those two services by subscribing Lambda to the queue, or some people say adding queue as a Lambda trigger. This will require a specialized Lambda role setup, which will allow us to receive and delete the messages from the queue. Finally, we will test the entire solution end-to-end -end by inserting some messages in the queue and processing them. Step number one, SQS queue setup. In the console, search for SQS and click on the first result, simple queue service. Click create a queue and configuration screen will open. For the queue type setting, this depends on your use case. Generally, if you don't need to preserve the order of message processing, standard is the better option. It supports higher throughput, meaning more messages per second, so faster processing than FIFO. FIFO means first in, first out, and ensures that messages are processed in the exact order they are received, but it comes with some throughput limitations. For this example, I will choose standard. For the name, let's name our queue my queue. For configuration, for this exercise, we will leave all default settings as they are. Keep in mind that all options except the queue type can be modified later, so if you need to adjust something, it's easy to do. And now we get to access policy. This setting is important when other AWS services like Lambda need to interact with the messages from your queue. It basically defines who can do what with the messages. We will leave it empty for now and set it up when we create Lambda. There is also a section to configure a dead letter queue. A dead letter queue captures messages that repeatedly fail to be processed. It's a good practice to create a dead letter queue so you can isolate problematic messages from the rest. But for simplicity, we will skip it for now. We can always configure it later. Click Create Queue, and our queue is now created. You will see it listed under the Queue tab. If you ever need to update settings, click the Edit button. Most options can be changed after initial creation of the queue. Second step is to create Lambda function. Go to AWS console, type Lambda, select it, and click Create function. You will see a few options here. Author from scratch, use a blueprint, or create from a container image. We will choose author from scratch for learning purposes. However, when you are unsure how to begin, using a blueprint can be a very helpful starting point. It provides common use case setups like our Lambda with SQS trigger, and it includes permission setup, trigger configuration, and sample code. So if you have no idea what to do, this is a great starting point. Now let's go back to create from scratch so I can show you full end-to-end -end manual process of setting it up. Function name, let's call it my Lambda SQS processor. Runtime language. Uh, I will use Python for this demo. You can see a little note here that languages like Java are not supported in the inline editor. So if you choose them, you will not be able to edit the code directly in the console. That's why, for the purpose of this video, I need to use one of the languages listed here. 
we'll keep the default architecture. And now, very important thing, permissions. If you remember our little design, our Lambda needs to connect to SQSQ. And in order to do it, it needs permissions. To be specific, it needs SQS receive message, SQS delete message, and SQS get queue attributes. To configure this, we have several choices. We can either create a new role manually and then attach proper policies, or use a policy template, which is quicker and usually includes all needed permissions. Let's name the role my Lambda processor role, and I will not be creating policy from scratch. I will use a policy template. So when selecting a policy template, type SQS and choose the Amazon SQS Polar template. It contains all necessary permissions to connect to the queue. I will show you later how to review them. We can skip the optional configurations for now and click Create Function. Once Lambda is created, you will see some sample code already populated here. One more thing that I wanted to show you in this section is to check Lambda role that we just created. Go to IIM section in the console, select roles, and let's start typing the name of the role we just created. When we click on the role, we can see two policies attached. The first one is AWS Lambda Basic Execution Role. Um, this role allows the function to write logs to CloudWatch. And another one is Amazon SQS Polar Execution Role, which grants access to all SQS queues in the account with the permissions we discussed. With that, your Lambda function should be ready to process messages from the queue. The third step is to write and test the logic inside our Lambda function. First, let's replace the sample code with our own message processing code. You will notice that Lambda Handler receives two inputs, event and context. To understand how to handle event, we need to know how it looks like. And AWS makes it very easy for us. Go to Test tab and choose the SQS template. This gives you a sample structure of the event object that you will receive. You will see that event includes a records array where each item represents an SQS message with those fields. So we can see fields like message ID, body, etc. This template includes just one message, but we can manually add as many as we want. I will add a second one so we have a small batch. I will copy this message sample, paste it below, assign different ID and body. This gives us two messages with body message one and message two. We can name our test data. I will name mine my test event and click save. If there are any syntax error in the JSON, you will see an error message at the bottom and you won't be able to save it. For example, you can see if I forgot a comma here, I get an error. Let's go back to the code editor. Now that we understand the input structure of the event, we can write logic to process it. Here is the basic code that I wrote. We create records variable in which we extract records from event object and for each of those records in records array, we'll print the body. Don't worry if you are not familiar with Python. I'm not an expert either. The key idea here that you need to understand is that this code loops through all incoming messages and prints each message body to the console. Once our code is ready, click Deploy. And now we are ready to test it. Let's go back to the Test tab and click Test. We can see that we got the green success message and our Lambda handler printed both messages in the console, so everything works as expected. Another step is to connect AWS Lambda with the queue, which is also called creating a trigger. There are two ways to do it. You can do it from our Lambda function, clicking a trigger here and selecting SQS from the dropdown. Or you can go to SQS queue, go to Lambda triggers tab and click configure Lambda function trigger. 
As you can see, doing it from here doesn't give you any configuration options. So I like to do it from Lambda. So let's go back. Select your queue from the dropdown. Deselect active trigger if you want to perform testing. This means your Lambda function will not be triggered by messages inserted. Once you insert a message or batch of messages, you can enable it and it will start processing. So I will disable it since we want to test it in the next step. Now two important settings, batch size and batch window. Batch size defaults to 10 and it means that the maximum of 10 messages can be processed at a single Lambda invocation. Batch window, I will set it to 60 seconds. This means that Lambda will wait 60 seconds to accumulate the messages and it will invoke after this time. So it means that if your queue accumulates three messages, three will be processed. If only one, one will be processed, but it will not be more than 10 in our case. Maximum concurrency is how many concurrent invocations we may have at the same time. We'll leave it empty, which means only one. So Lambda can scale horizontally. So if you set it to 100, maximum invocations of 100 Lambdas can run at the same time. And that's pretty much it here. After clicking Add, you can see that our trigger is visible on the graph here. And after clicking on it, you may edit the configuration. When we go to SQSQ now, we will also see the Lambda in the Lambda Triggers tab. So our services are connected now. Testing workflow end to end. So we've already tested the Lambda function logic in isolation and confirmed it works correctly in step three. It's very important to do before we move to end to end testing to make sure Lambda logic works in isolation. So if something goes wrong in our end to end test, we know it is rather a problem with SQS Lambda communication than Lambda logic itself. In our end-to-end -end test, we want to ensure that when a message is sent to the queue, it's picked up and processed by the Lambda and also after processing, it's deleted from the queue. So we will be verifying the entire message flow. Reminder that our trigger is currently disabled, which means that none of the message that we insert into the queue will be processed until we activate it. Let's go to the SQS queue and click send and receive messages. And here we will insert message by the message one message two and message three. So three separate messages. Now, when we go back to the queue overview, we'll see that messages are available, but are not in flight. In flight means that currently they are being processed. Let's go to Lambda function and enable our trigger. When we go back to the queue now, we can see they started processing. All three messages are in flight. After a few refreshes, they should disappear from the queue, which means that the processing is completed. To see how they were processed, we can go to CloudWatch logs and view them there. Also, if you go to the monitoring, you can see all of the Lambda invocations on the graphs. For all of the three messages that we inserted, we can see that they were processed separately, which means that Lambda invoked three times. So you can see that although we set up the batching window for 60 seconds, it doesn't necessarily wait 60 seconds every time. To test if our batching works, um, we will need to insert more messages into the queue. Let's insert another batch, message 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we have another seven messages. Let's wait a bit. 
we can see that all of them now disappeared from the queue. And when we go to CloudWatch logs right now, we can see that Lambda was invoked four times and some of them were batched together. Message four and six were batched together, seven and eight were processed separately and five, nine and 10 were batched together as well.